There's no signs up there. And when there's fog, you can't see the lodge. You can't see it. Now at 11, deadly confusion. What the family of the hiker who lost his life on Mount Hood wants to see done before another tragedy like his happens again. And trading punches and blame. What both groups involved in this fight at a protest in Portland last night are saying about who started it. And the Oregonian newspaper backs Newt Bueller for the next governor of Oregon. What it could mean for his campaign. This is KGW News at 11. We have breaking news out of Vancouver where a fatal crash has blocked multiple lanes. This is where I-5 and Main Street cross. We don't have a lot of information right now, but Washington State Patrol tell us one person has died when a car rolled over. It's not clear what caused that rollover. Right now, multiple lanes in both directions are blocked. You should expect delays if you're driving through that area. So he was extremely bright. Um, he had a, a great future ahead of him. A bright future cut short by a wrong turn on Mount Hood. That was the voice of David Yagmurian's mother. David got lost and died while hiking the Timberline Loop Trail this past week. Tonight, his family is calling for changes on that trail. KGW's Lindsay Nadrich spoke with David's mom today. Lindsay? Well, she reached out to us after seeing our story about another backpacker who got lost in that same area. That woman survived, but now that she knows there's a problem on the trail, David's mom demands change. David is from Phoenix. He doesn't know the environment there. Um, he doesn't know that trail. That's the voice of David Yagmorian's mom, Mary Ellen. She sounds fine, but of course, she's not. She's now making funeral arrangements for her son and can't believe what was supposed to be a fun trip to Portland ended this way. He died on Monday night um, in the fog. He um, went on the wrong path. David was at the end of a four-day hike on Mount Hood when the fog rolled in. Instead of going toward the lodge, she believes David got lost in the fog and hiked back up the mountain unknowingly. They suspected no foul play at all. Tragic accident. It was the weather. Another hiker told us the same thing happened to her just days earlier. The whole trail is up and down, up and down, up and down. And so it's hard to tell, like, at what point were you supposed to go down again? It's that confusion on the trail David's mom wants fixed. I would like it very much if they would improve their signs so that it doesn't happen to another another hiker. She's convinced something as simple as a sign pointing toward the lodge could have saved David's life. He was very bright. He was very logical in his thinking. If he'd seen a sign uh, that said lodge this way, he would have gone lodge that way. You know, he would have gone that way. She now wants others to speak up to push for signs along the trail so another life like David's isn't lost in the future. In the meantime, she's left with memories of her son. He was so nice. He was kind. He was helpful. Um, you know, he was just a great kid. He was a great son. Well, David's mom also wishes he'd been wearing orange or other bright colors to make him easier to spot. She thinks other backpackers should do that as well. Mm. Back to you. So sad. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, a lot of folks still reacting to this ugly melee that broke out in downtown Portland last night, and both sides are blaming the other for starting the violence. Rose City Antifa put out a statement today criticizing Joey Gibson and Patriot Prayer, stating in part it creates a safe space for dangerous, violent right-wingers and fascists to come in and wreak havoc in Portland. Not surprisingly, Gibson sees it differently. Last night, he told us his group was simply trying to walk down the sidewalk when members of Antifa blocked their path. So we were walking down the sidewalk and then they built a wall. Uh, apparently they're against walls, but they built a wall and then they pepper sprayed us and we waited and waited and then recouped and then we tried to march through again and fights broke out. So, I mean, I don't know what else to do. I mean, we got to expose that. We have to be able to have a right to march on these sidewalks. Portland police did not make any arrests during last night's protest and counter demonstration. You can see there was plenty of punches thrown. They do encourage anyone who is the victim of an assault to file a report with Portland's Police Bureau. Now to Oregon politics. The Oregonian newspapers endorsed Newt Bueller, the Republican candidate for governor. You probably saw the editorial in your paper this morning. We told you about it right here last night. So what's it mean? Does a newspaper editorial carry any weight anymore? Christine Pitawanich set out to answer that question. Do you want to hear a scary story? We're getting closer to Election Day. Our health decisions 
Our leaders should protect our rights. These ads seem like they're everywhere. It's hard not to pay attention. I mean, they're, they're commercials every 30 seconds. And now one of the candidates looking to be Oregon's next governor has snagged a big endorsement. The Oregonian's editorial board has chosen to endorse Republican Newt Bueller. I was a little surprised, but uh, um, you know what? OK. And I kind of always figured that Oregon and Portland in general was kind of more Democratic leaning. But to some political experts, it wasn't a surprise. The Oregonian editorial page has been really pushing against the Brown administration on a variety of things. Dr. Jim Moore specializes in politics and government at Pacific University. He says while an endorsement like this for a Republican candidate for governor isn't unique, it hasn't happened in quite a while. They've endorsed people like Gordon Smith when he was a, a Republican running for the Senate. They endorsed uh, um, a Republican Secretary of State, uh, Dennis Richardson, um, running. So so it, it's not unknown, but for the Republicans race, it's been a long, long time. As for swaying power, Moore says back in the 70s or 80s, this kind of endorsement would have made a big difference. But these days, not so much. Now it comes down to what Bueller will do with the endorsement. But the statewide impact of the Oregonian is gone. And so that's not going to really play a role once again, unless Bueller picks it up and starts running ads all over the state that show it. In Portland, Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Political experts remind us there are more registered Democrats in Oregon than Republicans, and Bueller does have an uphill battle because of that. In response to the Oregonian endorsement today, Bueller released a statement that says, in part, the Oregonian endorsement of my campaign is an endorsement of the much needed change in Oregon. We also reached out to Governor Brown's campaign for comment. We have not heard back. Well, it's a beautiful fall day out there today, and it's going to stay like that for a while. Chris McGinnis here with a look at our forecast. Yeah, I mean, if you were stuck working today, don't worry, because this, this weather is going to stick around for a few more days and maybe, maybe all the way through next weekend. That is really something. We've got a really nice stretch of weather, but it's starting to cool off a little bit, and that's part of the headline tonight. 55 right now at the airport. Southeast winds at 7. All right, that's not so cold, but... As we look at uh, the big map here, you see these little purple boxes on the map. Those are freeze warnings issued by the Weather Service for parts of Clark, Callitz, and Columbia County. Also down to the south in the central and southern Willamette Valleys. We're under a freeze warning until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning because we think temperatures could be getting awfully close to the freezing mark if, big if, if the winds subside in those areas overnight. The wind hasn't dropped off all that much out towards Troutdale. Right now it's 58. But up in Woodland, not much of a breeze. It's 46, it's 43 in Scappoose. So you get the idea. Timber Junction out here, uh, by the way, at the base of the coast range, are already down to 36 degrees. And the big picture statewide is cold over in Burns. Burns was 11 this morning, by the way. They're already down to 20. No chill like that in our forecast, but uh, Pat, it is going to be a little cool tomorrow morning. And then we've got a nice, warm, sunny afternoon. The full seven day coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Chris. Hopefully people covered their plants this afternoon. Oregon emergency management officials are sending a second team to join the ongoing search and rescue in the hardest hit areas of Hurricane Michael. The storm delivered a direct hit to Florida's panhandle and nearly leveled entire communities. In Mexico Beach, where Michael's winds reached 155 miles an hour, listen to this, 95% of the town is unfit to live in. Other panhandle communities are also struggling. In Lynn Haven, residents lined up for water and other basic supplies today, and the mayor there says the town just looks unfamiliar. We're estimating um, somewhere around 80 to 90 percent are just, you know, almost beyond repair here in this town, and we have no power, no sewer, no light. Right now my heart is broken. Um, I, I don't recognize the streets at night when the lights go out. I literally have to count the blocks to know how to find my house. Just feels so awful for those people. Look at those pictures. President Trump plans to visit Florida and Georgia tomorrow to see this damage firsthand. A scary scene in southeast Portland early this afternoon when a car crashed into a tree in front of a house. Fortunately, no one in the yard or the house was hurt. Police say two juveniles were in the car, and while police were not chasing them, they were indeed looking for them. The driver only made it a few blocks before all this happened. It was at 52nd Avenue and Herald Street. The driver and the passenger ran away. Police found him a short time later. Turns out they were hurt in the crash. Paramedics took them to the hospital. Officers also found a gun in the car.